We're ready. All right, we're putting you front and center. Great. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're so thrilled to be here. Um, I'm pretty psyched that there's like, a, it looks like a, 161 people, which is like, wow. So thank you so much. Um, this was like really fun and a real pleasure to uh, look at the pictures that were submitted for the Windows uh, uh, show. And uh, we're going to share our screen now. So give us just a minute to pull that up and we'll start talking about the 20 images that we selected for tonight's thing. Just one second, share screen. Just up to. Desktop too. Did I do it wrong? Okay, stop. Okay, sorry. One second. I'm gonna do that again. Share screen. Desktop tweet. Share wrong desktop. I hope all of you are used to. Often these things have a few glitches. Um, you can see everything you're doing, so you're you're doing it right. Okay. So here's where we're going to start. So that that that's us. That's us. You already know us. Yeah. yeah. Enough said. Enough said. We're going to just jump right in. Let's look at pictures. Let's look at pictures. So while I was looking at the pictures that were submitted for this, um, I started to think about John Sarkowski and his seminal book called Mirrors and Windows. Um, John was a photographer, a curator, a historian, and a critic. And from 1962 to 1991, he was the director of photography at the Mo Museum of Modern Art in New York City. He believed that many photographs could be described as either a mirror, where the image was about self-expression, or as a window, where the goal for the image was to show us the world. So th maybe think about that a little bit uh, when you look at these images. Is it a mirror or is it a window, or could it be both? You have to make sure, there you go. There we are. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to be looking at 20 images tonight. Um, it did take a while to edit down. We, we had a, a nice group the first time around, but then it got a little bit more difficult as it went. We were going to actually show Sarah's favorite 20 and my favorite 20, which would have been, you know, a lot more. But no, we did it. We edited it. And I think a lot of them are both of our favorite 20. Yes, I think it worked out well. So, so we thought we'll start with this one. This is a beautiful image. And I think it, it is a really interesting image and in how it's almost like, uh, like looking through your camera's viewfinder is like looking through a window. So this is like a window, looking at a window, looking at a window. Um, I think the language that we use about images, framing an image or making a frame is also references to windows. So the window in this image is like a second viewfinder. There's the viewfinder that you look through and then there's a second viewfinder, which is creating a picture inside that photo. And I really like that sort of like levels and layers of, of photographs like that. Yeah, literally this is uh, several photographs, uh, not only what's in that frame, but also the wall create, created, um, uh, creates a different photograph and the area around it. So you've got all these things working and it's a very nice composition uh, um, and the light, the light had to be sunlit, that wall had to be sunlit for this to work. Yeah, great job, David. I love this picture, mostly because I wanna go there right now I want to I want to sit in that room by the fireplace and look at those mountains. Um, this is a kind of picture, a window picture, that where the outside becomes part of the inside, which I really like. And it's also a really good piece of travel photography. Right. Travel photography creates an allure to bring people to a place. They want to come there. And this is the kind of photograph to me, this is kind of place, and it's well photographed. That, uh, that that combines that uh, that allure. Yeah, for me, when I, as soon as I saw this, I thought, "Where is this, and when can I go?" It's the kind of picture when you're like, you know, on quarantine like this, we're like armchair traveling, and this is a beautiful um, example of that. And also, you know, those figures that are silhouetted in front of the window, they bring that humanity. You can put yourself there, and it's just a really well done yeah. photograph. This is yeah, P. Rappelson. Um, and uh, I believe that's the Tetons. I think so too. Yeah, kind of have to Why is that? I don't know. 
So this one, I really thought this was a beautiful frame that really worked on a lot of different levels. Um, the repetition of the vertical, the lines, it begins with that radiator that's inside the room. And then you have the balustrade and you have the columns with those lines. And then you have the trees beyond that, even the flower pots. Everything is working on this sort of vertical uh, repetition, I think, that really is pleasing and uh, and, and draws me into it. It also feels like it's almost like a, a framed print, uh, the mm -hmm. image that's outside. I mean, the, the, the technique here, the sharpness uh, is like really amazing from foreground to middle to background. And I think it's really well done, Rowena. Yeah, I, I like it too. It, it, it feels almost formal, uh, the way mm -hmm. it's set up. And um, this is another one where the lighting, the sunlight had to be in that background so that you can catch, mm -hmm. catch the highlights on the radiator in the foreground yeah. and just take it all the way back. And, and when you really think sweet. about, yeah, what Sarkowski was saying, this is really, this is a window photograph where it's about showing us the world. Uh, this one, this, the, that one was about uh, that picture and the ones before it were a bit about like being inside and looking outside. And then now this one is about being outside and like kind of looking in and looking at windows. Um, this one has a really timeless quality. I could not date it uh, in terms of like when it was, but I, I think it's like the composition is very formal, but it's also like really exact. The photographer really placed themselves in the right spot. It feels to me like they were totally thinking about the windows, the shutters, the doors, where's the bicycle, where's the woman. I feel like I'm in the hands of somebody who is like really in control of their craft. Michael, so well done on that. Um, I really think that it's, uh, you know, there's no keystoning. It just feels like really well built frame. And, and so many of the window pictures we see um, depend on depth. We, we're seeing several layers, um, reflections behind the window uh, layer, the, the uh, images in the, in the far background. This depends on one plane. Everything that Sarah was mentioning between the, the door, the the numeral over the door, the shutters, the curtains, the, the, uh, the bike, and especially the woman leaning forward mm -hmm. so that she's even in that plane. Everything mm -hmm. is, is one continuous piece. It's a very nice photograph. This is, for me, the uh, Edward Hopper of the pandemic. pandemic. He, this is just um, beautiful lighting, very inviting. See how important it is to have enough detail in the house itself. So you see the structure, it's dark, it's not overly bright, but um, there's, there's, there's shadow detail. And then you see inside and the woman who's looking at you, I think is very provocative. Mm -hmm. And especially that, the, the idea that the light by the door is on. Mm -hmm. It's almost an invitation coming in, mm -hmm. uh, but we know we can't because mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're all singles in this endeavor. Be, before I had realized that this was taken as sort of a pandemic quarantine, I really loved like the mystery about this and what was she thinking? And then knowing that this is taken during the pandemic, it's so, sort of like you think, oh, so is she, she's like almost fearful, like looking outside the window mm -hmm. to like, what's out there, that, that unknowable enemy that none of us can see. Um, and, and, I, and the mood and the, the color palette, um, I, as Bill was saying, the light on her, the doorway, and even that little glint of highlight, I think on the mail flap is like yeah. really important for this whole picture to work together as a whole. Yeah, very really good. nice job, Sandy. Sandy. Um, this is just a beautiful composition, beautiful kid. Um, this is where window light, um, I hate to say it, really shines. Okay, bad. <laughs> but, but there's something about the quality of light that you get out of a window where it's, um, it, it's very directed and in some cases diffused. So here you're looking at a photograph that actually is carrying its own wooden frame almost. The, the mm -hmm. photographer did, was very careful in making everything square. You've got the screen that creates a very interesting uh, pattern over the kid's face. Um, what's crucial though, is the catch light in the kid's eyes. Mm -hmm. And often we don't, uh, maybe don't notice that, but if you, so often if, there, if you have eye contact, that catch light 
really makes things come alive. And there's a personality, there's almost an eagerness um, to want to meet this kid. Um, this is by uh, Anna Caroline uh, De Lima. Uh, it's an Amish, is that right? Mennonite. Mennonite kid who wanted to be photographed. Yeah, I, I, I love the, this one and the next one. They both carry a, a little bit similar very quality, different. which is very moody and uh, some, you know, if you haven't read a caption, there's that touch of mystery, which I, I really like that kind of, uh, of portraits. These are portraits that are built with frames. Um, I think that darkness, the monochromatic uh, feeling really creates kind of a provocative mood. Um, you don't, until you know what's going on, you don't really um, under, understand what his expression is about. Um, we find out, we come to find out that uh, he wanted to have his picture taken with his parents, but they weren't up to it. And so he uh, has a little bit of a disappointment. But I think it's just a beautiful um, use of light and the framing on the window. This one by Russell Banks. Um, this is a portrait a bit similar to the last one, but it's very different, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, the the frame around it uh, catches. I think it's 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 a metal building inside of a, a, oh. a ship, mm -hmm. and the round porthole. So you get the texture of that even the the uh, the the, uh, the glass itself is in focus and it's very sharp. But the portrait, the person is behind that and a bit out of focus. And there's some really nice things that, that are happening with that because he's looking down. He's not looking at the viewer. Uh -huh. And there's something to me very approachable about this, about this picture and this portrait. It is a portrait. Um, but I feel like I can look at it probably maybe longer than if he had been looking at me. Uh -huh. And I like where he's just slightly out of focus too. I think, yeah, I love this one too. I think that there's the fact that the, a uh, person is not looking at us, I think really um, makes this so special. Uh, I feel like, you know, there's a lot of questions like, did he just receive bad news? Is he tired? Is he taking a break from work? I, lo I love that ambiguity. Um, it also helps me to kind of fill in the blanks in a way. I like portraits that don't really telegraph too directly what the person is feeling. I don't want to be being sold a particular attitude, like I'm happy, I'm sad. I think this is like contemplative. Yeah. The round frame is really, makes it really special. It's a beautiful Russell, well done. Yeah, I would love to know more about that story. Yeah. <laughs> this one, oh my gosh, uh, I just love this. This is like a little fairy tale. Um, the posture of these little mice, they're sort of looking through this window. I'm assuming they're like, to me, they're like looking through this window at this sort of a uh, little bit of an out of focus monkey in the back. And I just feel like it's like a little fairy tale and this is a chapter and I'm dying to turn the page and get the rest of the fairy tale and the story about these little mice. Um, it's like a magic little kingdom that I'm being dropped into. The way the light um, sort of silhouettes the mice, the um, the foggy window, and this a little bit imposing um, monkey on the back. It all really works together to create a very special photograph. And you know, well done, Annie. But it, it is mysterious. It is mysterious. I mean, I had sort of a um, uh, oh a couple seconds before I really realized before I saw the monkey. I mean, I, it's a nice photograph. Some mice. What's that shape in the background? What? What is that? And so often, um, mysterious photographs. Oh, the picture doesn't have to answer everything. It can I like, leave a lot I of like questions. Mystery. I'm into mystery. And this one leaves a lot. Uh, you know, why is there a spider monkey uh, with the mice? Yeah. But um, it, it, it's an engaging photograph. And, and engage, engaging is probably a good word to talk about just in terms of photography, you want people to spend time with your mm -hmm, pictures. Mm -hmm. And if everything is just straight on the surface um, and explains itself right away, this offers a little bit more to get involved with. Absolutely, it's yeah. Fun. It's fun. Now this one, um, this is by Celine Hartwig. Uh, the title on this, and some people, by the way, um, did give us titles and captions, some people didn't, so sometimes we might call them out. Uh, but uh, Celine's title for this is A Window on Main Street in Lost Nation, Iowa. Perfect. Now, you know, that really defines what this picture is about. Um, 
small town, Iowa, uh, it, economic hardship, you, you've got, my favorite thing is a sense of place. You've taken a sense of place photograph without being obvious and straight up. Mm. We're getting a reflection in a window. You've got, I think, five American flags, if you look deep enough, mm -hmm. four or five, mm -hmm. if you go keep, keep going back. Mm -hmm. Small towns, small, small houses, empty street, uh, cracked windows. You follow the, the, the lines of the cracked up to the first American flag, the biggest one that's been split, which continues mm -hmm. on to a stop sign in reverse. Um, it's, I think, a really haunting image of a small town. Yeah, I think it's a really, you know, sense of place doesn't have to mean that it's a landscape that no. looks like a postcard. Yeah. Um, this is like a really nice job of using that window and the reflections on that broken glass uh, to create that sense of place. It's sort of like the start of a story that I would like to see the rest of. Yeah, I would like to see the rest of the story. Yeah. Um, it, did you wanna? Um, this is by uh, Marsha Lloyd. Um, She's in Brooklyn, and she, uh, uh, her, the title of this is Inside Out. I'm just going to read you the last sentence of her caption. I feel a sense of longing and wistfulness, a shadowy existence in my favorite season when I can't see nature in all its glory. My indoor plants are no substitute. So this is a great thing. To me, words are very important. And if a photographer can put to words some of the feeling of the photograph, it goes beyond what's obvious in the picture. I like the picture to begin with, but now after hearing Marsha, I can relate to her a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I, I think that it's like, for me, the, the picture has to hook me first. I need like to be drawn in by the photograph without the words, and then the words just add depth and interest to me. Um, and this one, this one was like, really interesting. I love how the, uh, the person here is like, kind of stuffed into the curtains and kind of half in and out of the curtains. There's this sense of like um, sort of anguish in a way. And even though it's sort of, it's beauty with anguish and the, the, that mood, um, I feel like there's a sense of isolation, sort of like, you know, we're dying to go outside, but we're being blocked by something. Um, and it's just a really, you know, thinking about it in terms of quarantine, I think it really is a, a, a really interesting expression of, of those feelings that it's, a lot of us are having. Yeah, it feels very sad to me, even the plant. Like Sorry, Marcia, even, even the plant feels a little sad. Yeah. But everybody... But well done. It me. really works yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, love it. Now, this image is kind of uh, what the one, this tangle, this jungle of plants. It's you can't. In some ways, I looking at it, it's like what's inside the window, what's outside the window, and it's almost has this feeling for me of like nature is taking over. Like you know, all the humans are gone because they're all locked up somewhere. Nature is taking over the building, and um, it's a little scary, but it has this super beautiful lush quality. Um, I think that it was a, a, just a really well done um, idea in a way. And this to me is more of like that mirror picture. To me, this feels more like it's about the photographer, um, Carol, and, and her feelings. Whether that's true or not, that's my impression when I look at it. Yeah. I the, the same feelings about this, just in terms of um, there's no definition of boundary of the window frame. Um, what's inside is out and what's outside is in. Yeah. And it's... Uh, it fit this category really well. This one is like so the, almost the opposite of the last one. It is so simple. You know, it's like these bars that are on the, um, I'm assuming the shade and this little plant on the outside that's kind of delicately touching the glass or the shade. It's very minimalist. It feels very like Japanese in a way with that very, you know, Zen look. I think it's just, Here's where simplicity can be so powerful. It's just a beautiful, beautiful image. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's just delicate. We're agreeing so agree. much. <laughs> Usually that's not true. <laughs> uh, this is from uh, Shana Einhorn. Th this is a technique basically where you're taking a lot of those layers and you're putting them all, you're compressing them all into one. You're not trying to separate them. You bring them all together. And the trick, of course, is to find the bits and pieces of the reflection where you can see and reveal and create something else, something that's not obvious. And I think 
course, what, what's crucial is that Shana uh, found a spot to reveal a little bit of herself. Um, I, I, I don't know if it's Shana, but, but I think it is. Um, but at any rate, but you, you're revealing enough of the face. If you didn't have the face in this, um, it wouldn't be as appealing. Yeah, it's really a portrait in, mm -hmm. in many ways. It's like this layered, reflective portrait, whether it is the photographer or not. I think it is one of those mirror pictures. It's not really a window. It's it's, but it's using the window to reflect um, an attitude, a feeling. We have nature. Maybe we're being separated from nature at this time. Um, it's just a beautiful portrait, and I think it's really like constructed. Um, in a very intentional and um, and successful way. Yeah, a lot of these pictures are so moody. Yeah, um, they're, they're expressing. I like moody. Oh yeah, I, I, I think I think that's really the essence of what we're looking at in most of these pictures. We're very attracted to to that kind of feeling. Uh -huh. This one, in many ways, similar to the last one, um, but Jolene Jolene Rowe. I'm not sure if we had a caption on this. No. Um, but I'm assuming that this is a uh, similarly done where you've got many layers. You've got a, a shadow looking out to another building on the, uh, the shadow on the wall. You've got the reflection of a, of a uh, lamp behind. And you're looking down the city street and the mm -hmm. buildings. So it's got all those levels and layers. It's all being combined into one. The color is, uh, is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. I've been in a lot of hotel rooms in what looks like New York City and, and tried to do some of this kind of a picture and not been this successful. I think having that waving little hand at the top, um, the printing on, or I'm thinking is the wall across the street and then the street, the buildings in the background. I mean, it really comes together in a beautiful way. Well done. Um, this one is, uh, it's called The Veiled City, Erica titled it. Uh, I, I, to me, this is like, you know, I, I like those kind of pictures where you see through things and you create mystery and layers. And this one is just a simple curtain and looking through it and having the folds in the curtain are so important to this picture. If you pulled that curtain back and just shot that city, it wouldn't be the same image at all. It wouldn't have the same feeling or the mood or the mystery. Boring. It would be just eh, kind of meh. Yeah. But with that curtain and those folds like that, it really creates just a beautiful scene and a beautiful you know, idea about uh, windows and looking through windows. And Eric found a time of day where the light actually showed through those, uh, those drapes. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't have those vertical pleats, mm -hmm. it would be, not be half the picture it is now. You really yeah. needed that dimension yeah. of the pattern running through the buildings. Yeah, absolutely. So this one, it's like some people don't, might look at this and say, Don't, don't, don't adjust your screen. <laughs> yes, it, 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 is. it is totally out of focus. But yes, for me, that is what makes it so beautiful. This is about the color and the form and the mood and imagination. And for me, I'm very soothed by this. I find this very relaxing. I think the color palette, I hope that this was a, these intentional decisions, like to not sort of play by the rules. Um, it, this works so well to just have that super softness, like the end of the day, you know, I just found this um, to be like really intriguing, quite special. And Maura could not have taken this picture with autofocus. Uh, <laughs> yes. It's basically, again, it's a decision to knock everything out. Yeah. Not have that window frame sharp, mm -hmm. nothing sharp. Mm -hmm. And it's just beautiful for that. Yeah. This is another one where we have obscured things, but the, the, the plane of the window and the raindrops are sharp. And then what's behind it is out of focus, which makes it like a, about color and shape. You know, Bill was saying, well, what is that? And I said, well, to me, that's a, I think that's a person in a, like a yellow rain slicker walking by the window. But it's also about just the formality of color and shape. And I, I, find, I find these kind of pictures like something that like can stay with me. I can look at them longer sometimes than pictures that are very specific. Yeah, I agree. And, and so one thing we want to do is, is change it up a little bit. We're going to basically take the last two pictures and put them together. Um, and because Sarah and I do a lot of editing, 
this is something we constantly do. We, we basically find sometimes several pictures that actually work really well together to create a third effect. Um, they have a lot of things in common and a lot of things different, but the color palettes work really well together. Mm -hmm. The yellow coming off uh, in each of the pictures, the warm colors uh, um, coming away mm -hmm. from the darker colors. Um, and how those kind of the background lines just sort of blend into the, each other. That horizon is beautiful yeah. together. It's really lovely. But they're very different pictures though. Mara's picture with nothing in, nothing sharp and Frank's with just the background. You know, they, create something else. But this is something where, again, um, sometimes you don't know where to focus on windows. Mm. Whether you, do you focus on the window? Do you focus on the background? Or in Mars' case, don't focus on anything. A lot of times it works. Mm -hmm. You just have to try it. Yeah, be experimental. Feel it. Feel it. Uh, yeah. uh, this is Wendy Schneider's picture of, um, of trees behind a window with, uh, with rain. And uh, her title is As the Snow Melts. Uh, and I think this is another one where you're looking at something in the foreground, like the kid, in the, the person in the slicker, and knocking the background down. But this pattern uh, uh -huh. is very beautiful and very ethereal. Uh -huh. And um, it's, just, it's just art. But you need the combination of something sharp knocking out that's uh, right. knocking out that background. and it's also like you know what's the it's such a simple subject looking out your window and there's a tree yeah. and um th this one and the next one are really both that topic um looking out the window and there's a tree and and two very different approaches equally lovely let's go to that yeah good job wendy yeah Here's the other one, looking out the window and there's a tree. This one's a little bit more like those raindrops that were sharp in the foreground and then the background is out with the guy in the yellow slicker. You know, this is a really beautiful, a bit more formal with the, I mean, the grid pattern of the window gives it that formality. Um, but it's just, a, it's just, it's lovely. I love the fact that both of these, and we'll look at them together, um, have this very monochromatic color palette. Yeah, it, it, it works perfectly. They, yeah. But again, they're different. They're, they're similar, but they're different. They're both focusing in the foreground on the window pane, but very different backgrounds. And I love the formality mm -hmm. of the big uh, window panes, mm -hmm. dividing it up into what? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, six, uh, 12, uh, 12 panes with that very singular shape, a very strong shape of a tree instead of the lacy little trees. Fine. Yeah, it's, it, it kind of shows you how, you know, something that you think is like, oh, maybe everybody's done it or something. Everybody has a unique vision and you can take the same topic, tree out my window. And there's so, it's like snowflakes. Everybody can do their own version of that. And there are so many and they're all, and they're lovely. I mean, both of these are just really lovely photographs of something that is quite a simple idea. Good job, both of you. Yeah, great, Melinda and Wendy. Nice work. What can I say? Lex Beach. Um, uh, just, Hi, just, Lex. I hope you're there. <laughs> we'll, we'll explain in a second. Uh, I'm just going to read Lex's last line in her caption. It's very simple. And we'll not go into everything, but she's a, a family. Um, seven kids, yeah. two parents. This photo, this, this photo is a window into our quarantine life. The title? I call it goats on the table. Yeah. So full <laughs> disclosure, uh, Lex was uh, one of our students at our Santa Fe photo editing workshop last summer. And she documents her family in what is, to me, in the most pleasurable way. Um, I love in this, you know, this is like not so much about the windows themselves, as in so many of the pictures we've seen. But this is about how windows create like sort of like arms around this family in which this room and life takes place. Um, I think it's a it's so full of uh, energy and surprise what they're true. These are true. They really do have two little goats that live in the house. Um, and, and it's and it's just I love how the, 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 the windows light up the room. Um, I, yeah, it, it's, it's a different definition of window too. I mean, mm -hmm. usually we're, we're, we're looking for a physical window someplace, but the idea of seeing, uh, having a window into our soul 
And for Lex, this is a window into their life that they've been living the last uh, couple months. I think you can use yeah. that metaphor in so many ways. Yeah. But, but yeah. this, this um, let's just have it. They have an Instagram feed. Lex has an Instagram feed called Edith Every Day. Edith period every period day. And this is the, the little Edith girl, the little on, the girl on the left. And the it it is just a great feed. I encourage everybody, please go follow it. Yeah. You will not be disappointed. There are goats, there's ducks, there's, uh, yeah, yeah, but, but Edith is in the middle of it. Yeah. But, but this picture, regardless, of, we know Lex, but this is just a wonderful family portrait. And I think that, you know, thinking about um, windows, I mean, every photograph is a window. Every photograph is a window or a mirror. Uh, it's, but we're always, we're putting a frame around something, whether it reflects, the, shows you the world or whether it reflects yourself. Um, Windows, I mean, we're all, as a photographers, everyone is creating windows. So that's it. That's our 20. That's our 20. Hope you enjoyed it. Back to you, Stafford. So thank you so much. You know, um, we, we went through that pretty quickly, which was, which was awesome because sometimes we, you know, these presentations can go on for a little while. Um, I do want to mention to everyone, um, this is the only little bit of marketing thing that I'm going to do today, is that we have chosen to take a lot of our classes online now. So every, about every other week, we're sending out a newsletter with uh, classes that you can take. Um, there's all sorts of different ones. Uh, we have the Craft of food, uh, food Memoir Writing with Molly Weisenberg coming up, Seeing the Forests and the Trees uh, with Richard Goodman. Um, anyway, we've got a lot of, of great things coming up. So stay tuned to our newsletters and also stay tuned to Facebook and Instagram because that's really how we're getting um, the, the message out there. And so we didn't get a lot of questions, but you know, anytime you've got Bill and Sarah on the line and you don't take the opportunity to ask us some questions, you're, you're, you're missing a huge opportunity. So I'm just going to ask some questions. All right, um, I'm gonna... <laughs> What's that? Uh-oh, okay. No, I mean, going, going through, so actually Michael made a, made a comment. Um, he said, I like how you tell us how a photo works. And can you just elaborate a little bit on your thought process of when you're dissecting a photo? Because I think we know immediately intuitively why something works, but it'd be really nice to hear from you guys when you're looking at a picture. How, how do you interpret it? How, do, how does a photo actually work? Um, we're, we're struggling here to unscreen it's share. We, oh, okay. Just a minute. We, we yeah. did we stop it for you. You guys are okay. I turned it off for you. You did? Okay. Good. Thank we couldn't you. Do it. We couldn't figure out. <laughs> it was like not working. Um, so, sorry, uh, Stafford, you were saying, how do we interpret? No. Yeah. Let, so let me just repeat it. Cause, um, Michael made a good comment where he, he just said that he likes how, when you're going through, you're telling us, you know, why a photograph works. And yeah. I think we all intuitively know in our heart or an emotional response why something works. We just, it does or it doesn't. But could you talk a little bit about your thought process when you're going through an evaluating picture about why something works and why something doesn't work? Mm -hmm. oh, I think it's like what you're saying. The first thing is that, you know, you have an immediate response. It's that photography is really like very, for me, um, it should work on a very nonverbal level first. Like I look at it and I have a feeling. It's like pleasurable. I'm like feeling hopefully sort of maybe what the photographer's intention is or what they're feeling. Um, so I think it starts there. And then when, you know, so but when you're trying to critique a picture or trying to talk to a picture, then it gets into maybe some more structural, like composition, light, the moment, you know, and sort of like how you sort of evaluate it. So it kind of, for me, it starts like, you know, with my heart and how it makes me feel. And then, you know, my mind and it starts to engage, right? Um, I like often, you know, and we were breaking it down for you all. So to, to sort of like, to, to, to talk, talk, a, to talk a little bit more about our process. But I think that, um, you know, what generally it's just how you feel, right? At mm -hmm. first. And I, to me, that's the most important thing. And I don't even ever have to have my brain engaged, except if I'm trying to do a much more documentary, journalistic type story where I have to like, you know, tell certain things. But I think that it's really important to start with how it feels and how it's making you feel. Yeah, photographs are emotional. 
they are. They, they, they the either, they, yeah. they either take you to a place like we were talking about before with going to the Tetons, or they take you as a part of your memory to some place. Mm -hmm. And, but, but regardless, it, it all has to do with emotions. If it was just a clinical, um, perfectly, you know, scientifically perfect image, it's going to be losing a lot of feeling. Mm -hmm. That's why some pictures usually, you know, yes, there's a lot of perfect pictures out there, but usually there's a little bit of something that just makes it a little bit. I mean, any kind of feeling. feeling is a good feeling. Like I think that, you mm -hmm. know, um, you know, does this picture make me angry? Does it make me happy? Does it make me sad? Is it kind of bland in a particular, boring in a particularly evocative way, right? I think, mm -hmm. you know, is there a formality and a structure that strikes you? So I, I, I you know, I'm very eclectic in what I like. So um, I, all kinds of photography, I think, uh, can, can move you, you know, and that's what you want is to make an impact and, Tell create, a story. create tell a story or create images that um, people you know you care about the picture you made and how do you get other people to care about the picture that you made one, one thing I noticed when we were looking at the picture of the gentleman looking through the porthole is mm -hmm. that almost everything in that image had almost everything to do with that breaking all the rules of good photography or, or what we're learning in like photography 101 about you know the rule of mm -hmm. thirds and making sure you get the eyes and focus and everything. And it seems like most of the good pictures have a lot to do with not doing what we're taught to do when you first take mm -hmm. your first photographic mm -hmm. class. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about um, how, how we as photographers can, can start to explore, you know, especially people that are new, um, you know, breaking rules and creating better stories by doing that? Take a picture completely out of focus. <laughs> yes, I think it it's sort of like put, if you think about Picasso, right? I mean, Picasso started like you know went to art school and learned how to draw and how to create sort of replicate reality. You know, if you look at his early work, he was drawing you know actual things and they looked like the person, like a portrait looked like that person. And then you know he when he started to like th threw out that and started to break all the rules that's when he really changed the game mm -hmm. so I think it's like it, it's sort of like learning it's like you need to almost learn some you know some people or most of us need to learn the fundamentals and then find your own path find your own voice you know then like throw all that out it's good to know it's a foundation it's something to stand on but then you really have to find your own voice and your own vision and, and your own interpretation of the world as you see it yeah, no one's become famous from following rules. <laughs> yeah, you know, just kind of, it's the fundamental. You know, you need to learn how to use the camera and you need how to do it. And then you can just go. Then it's like, just go. Just yeah. fly. I, I love that idea of, of getting the fundamentals down first. Because I it, the same thing is true in painting and drawing. It's like, yeah. you got to learn how to paint and draw and make the, make the picture right. And then you can choose what the heck you want to do with it down Absolutely. the road. Absolutely. And I mean, the, the best artists and um, things they, you know, they were really uh, excellent at the craft and then they just took off and they found their own direction and then they broke every single rule and they created new rules and they created a new vision. And yeah. I think that that's, that's how you stand out, right? One, one comment you made, um, I think when we were looking at the picture of the flags and you mm -hmm. said, something like to the effect of um, a picture doesn't have to answer everything and mm -hmm. and 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 can you talk a little bit about you know a picture not answering everything and and how by doing so that increases sort of attention that draws in engagement mm -hmm. I, I think for me especially it's like um, I'm not really interested in I, I find didactic pictures like like how to or they're, they're 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 very like sort of like trying to tell me something like sort of call it like a point picture it's trying to make a particular point right i find those less interesting than the ones that um are have more questions i feel like i can as as the viewer i can bring more of my own imagination to it right so it's like I, I like that I like that mystery and not having everything spelled out in mm -hmm. a way I, I think that to me for me personally those are the pictures that I think you know stay with me longer 
you know, the, the flags on the on the main street in Iowa, that that to me just um, it raises a lot of questions. Like I want to know more about that place. Having seen that, I have a feeling that the photographer is going to tell us a story about a real situation. Mm. And it's well, depending on the on the next three or four photographs that the photographer shows us, it's going to either surprise us or it may get us in a little deeper to why they feel that way. But every every one of these pictures has a chance to tell a piece of the story. It doesn't have to tell everything. Mm -hmm. And that picture to me uh, was a great, like I said, as a scene setter, it, it tells you where we are. I also think that I often think about photographs as uh, a little bit like literature. So, you know, there are those, or, or a joke, right? So there are like, there's those little <laughs> simple jokes that are like, like that, like you, they tell the joke and then you get the punchline and then it's never funny again, right? It's just funny yeah, the one time, funny. right? You got the punchline and then, you know, somebody tries, if they try to tell that joke again, well, it wouldn't really be that funny. So there's pictures that are like little simple jokes and you see them the one time and then that's it. They don't, they, they don't have anything else to deliver. And those ones that have a little bit more mystery and nuance and layer to it, they never stop giving you something. You can walk by that photo and the next time and the next time and the next time and they're they're always giving you a little something more and those are the pictures to me that last and um, the ones that in, in my house those are the ones I want to live with. So when you're when you're you know confronted with a big editing project, do you find the joke pictures like jump out at you immediately and then when you come back to the to the light box or the the light table back in the old days that you know, on the third or fourth pass, that's where you find the, the, the real photography? Yeah, I, th I think that, you know, and it's, and I don't, and maybe joke is not, not, it, but maybe that feels like a criticism. One, dimen it's, one it, dimensional. But I mean, yeah. those pictures can be really, really important when it's like a new situation. And you, you, you need that, you need to know and see that this moment happened. And that's really important moment and it's fast and it delivers it really fast and viscerally. So I think there's a definite role for that kind of photograph. Um, but in terms of the ones that sort of last for me, you know, as a as somebody who loves to kind of collect photography and be around photography. Yeah, I think those more nuanced, maybe more mysterious, or they're just the ones that I feel like um, have an enduring quality. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of those I, like momentary kind of quick photographs that have a huge enduring quality because they have captured a moment in time and in history, you know, that uh, is really important for us to keep and as part of our, the, our human story. They probably all, all would have been captured in the first edit, but mm -hmm. the, the more interesting, more nuanced photographs would last longer. Those are the ones, like Sarah in said, those are the way. ones you want to keep. Mm -hmm. And uh, the obvious, there's nothing wrong with a simple photograph, but sometimes you want to have come at it several ways at once and have several yeah. layers. I think a simple photograph also doesn't mean um, not bad. It, nothing, is nothing, nothing bad. I mean, actually, they can be very enduring. I, yeah. I mean, I think the picture that we showed of the um, with the that was kind of had that very sort of Japanese quality, very simple, but a very enduring image. Mm -hmm. That's great. So one, one question that always comes up in you know, every forum is, what do you feel about the role of Photoshop? You know, can, can we compose in Photoshop and still create uh, photography or, or, or should we all be, you know, composing in the lens? Uh, what, what's, what's your guys' take on that? Well, it's really the intention too and, and the publishing platform. Like if you're, if you're uh, doing work for, um, and, and it's considered photojournalism and it's reportage, then there's the only role for photo for Photoshop is like making the print, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just the printing of that picture, you know, the saturation, some contrast, etc. But there's no, uh, you can't like add or subtract, you know. But if it's not for uh, sort of a reportage, um, you know, a newspaper, or National Geographic, or something, then you know, sky's the limit. I mean, then it's art, and then go for it, right? It's just being clear. It's that clarity of what like the, what it is, what's the, what's the intention, you know, am I supposed to believe this is real? Am I not supposed, it's not real. You know, 
as long as that's clear, then I don't, you know, I, yay, I love it all. Great. So, Zach, do you have anything you want to chime in? I know you've been looking at the chat room. Um, there was one really good question that I just got, and I'm going to go ahead and read it. So it says, hi, Sarah and Bill, Adriana from, Viz I think it's Vizura. Vizura, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, anyone <laughs> for anyone who aspires to be a photo, to be photo editors, what advice do you have when it comes to finding your own voice and vision? How do you continue to develop your visual language as a photo editor? And how would you describe your process when you collaborate together on editing a project? Good questions. And anyway, also thank you, Visura, for um, uh, pushing this out to people on the Visura platform. They, they, um, they send it out to all their members. And so I think we have some Visura members also who uh, join this chat. Um, it's interesting about, I think, being about a photo editor because uh, recently on Facebook, there's a photo editor group and I've been asking um, people like, how did you start to be a photo editor? Because people ask me a lot. Um, I think photo editing is, uh, well, uh, uh, photographers are natural photo editors in a way because you're choosing when you're out in the field taking a picture, I'm gonna do that, I'm not gonna do this. And that, it's, it starts there. Like I, I'm taking this picture, I'm not taking this picture. I'm framing it this way, I'm not framing it that way. So it kind of starts there. That being said, often photographers and anybody has more trouble photographing their own work than somebody else's work, myself included. Um, but I think that being a photo editor, well, well, and it's also a fantastic job to have if you can be a photo editor. Um, it's about curating. It's about finding what you like. It's about storytelling. It's about finding, you know, when we made those little pairings, like finding those pictures that speak to one another, that like to, are happy together. Um, I think there's a lot of things about photo, photo editing that is part of being a photographer and it should be part of being a photographer. Um, and, and in terms of t projects that we may have worked on together, then it's a conversation between us and we don't always see eye to eye because, oh, really? you know, there's, uh, many ways to, uh, <laughs> build a story and, you know, yeah. everyone has their own feelings like about like the 20 pictures that we picked. I mean, if you had two different people doing it, you might've gotten 20 different pictures, um, and a different conversation. So it's very subjective. But it's also um, some intuitive, and you have to trust your instincts. Yeah, I, I, th I think picture editing is just a, a wonderful way of expressing photography and storytelling, mm -hmm. because you're helping a photographer find the story that they went out to shoot. Now, whether the photographer had that in mind or did it change a little bit, a lot of photographers get into their work and actually help them curate something to a better and more refined mm -hmm. uh, message. Mm -hmm. um, because you're looking for those pictures that we've been talking about, things that, that are emotional, things that you have the impact on. And uh, photographs that you'll remember. And sorry for the sound outside right now, there's a bunch of motorcycles going down the street. I think so. Um, but uh, <laughs> picture editing, not, uh, things have changed since we came up. And I don't know if there's um, as many obvious places like newspapers and magazines to, uh, to get practice, but there are so many more places to publish online, mm -hmm. digitally. Uh, the books that are coming out, the publishing that's going on now with independent booksellers. Oh my gosh, there's Gorgeous. much more creativity now than there was 20, mm -hmm. 30 years ago. It's really a, a, a great time yeah. for photography. It's definitely a golden age for photo books. There's just so many great photo books. It's incredible. So are, I'm seeing that some people are asking, um, you know, where could they see all these pictures again? And so I just want a little operational thing. We will find a way to post the, both the deck of the 20 selects, but we're also going to just create a slideshow of the 206 pictures that were submitted because you know, we got the 20 that, that we chose to talk about. There's also a bunch of other great photography in there. So we'll yeah. do a, a slideshow where, we, where you could just like see the name of the person and the picture so everyone can see everything that was submitted. So if, if, you're, if you didn't see your picture in the 20, you'll get a chance to see it there. And so one other question I have for you guys is, what should we do next? What should our next prompt be? Ooh. Good question. Ooh. You got 10 well, seconds. 
Great. <laughs> the, the windows was a great idea. I think it was perfect for this quarantine period. Um, hmm. Put that out to the audience. We got 139 people. What would you like to see? Put it, put it in the chat. I've been, been chat and I'll write it down. Yeah, everybody should say what they would like to see next. Um, I think, hmm. But I think still focused on this time that we're living yeah. is yeah. really valuable yeah. because th this has never happened like this. We'll, yeah. we will never have yeah. to do this again, but things are gonna be happening, especially through the end of the election that, um, or mm -hmm. unique to this time. I mean, maybe there's something around this idea of we're trying to be together, but being apart. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's something there. I mean, I, I find that the creativity, like this, this is a perfect example. The creativity of how sort of humans, all of us are still trying to be in community yes, is really interesting and very creative. Um, and there might be something around that that could be an interesting uh, call out. Okay, great. Hey, Stafford? Yeah, we had a great question real quick. How does a person submit if they want to send in their images to us? So we have, a, we have an alias that's called, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll send it out, um, but it's basically creativity.com. Um, and I'll, we'll, we'll post the alias again. Basically, you, you just, we, we have a criteria for the pixel dimensions. You just post it to that. And normally we ask you to post the picture and a brief statement about the picture. Um, the instructions we sent out last time didn't include the statement. Um, going forward, we will always have the picture and the statement. So the way we're announcing these um, generally is through our newsletter. So there's a couple of ways to find out about these. It's through our newsletter. So please come to our website and sign up for our newsletter. Uh, subsequent to this, I'll be sending out a message to everybody that submitted, you know, when, thanking them once again for the submissions. Uh, a little bit about information about what's coming up, an opportunity to sign up for the newsletter. Um, we never, ever, ever sell your information. Um, this is all about trying to build community um, because one of the things we, that is so wonderful about the workshops is normally in our winter spring season and our summer season, we're here in Northern New Mexico, sitting down for a week long workshop and creating this wonderful experience of pack that's packed into five days. Now we're dispersed. So we're trying to create an online environment where we still can be connected. And this is one of the ways we're doing it. So stay tuned. I will send out information after this to everyone that participated with a follow-up and links to where you can look at the 226, 206 pictures that were submitted and the presentation that uh, Sarah and Bill put together. So- Yeah, see the community. That's a good idea too. Mm -hmm. You know what? what you what you're doing and what all of us are trying to do now is to to be in community yeah so i think we're i think we're kind of wrapping up we've got we're, we're we've got like four minutes um so okay. that so th thank you bill and sarah so much it's so good to see your faces i know it's so great to see you it's too and thank you everybody for coming and i hope um you know you got something out of this we we super enjoyed doing it um and thank you so much for taking your time tonight and being with us it was really and thank you stafford and zach and reed and everybody who um brought us in it was really a wonderful experience thank yeah. you very much it was so much fun it was great yeah, you stay safe great. and keep keep making art. Keep keep photographing. Yeah. Stay tuned for the next prompt. Is there a way, Stafford, for us to um? Can you save the chat? Yes. So we could maybe go back and look at it. It would be yep. great to kind of see what everybody was saying. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of what was going on in the chat room was like everyone complimenting everybody else's work. <laughs> it was like, oh, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Really choices. Really huh? yeah, exactly. <laughs> which is which is what this whole community is about. It's about sharing work, talking about it, getting enthused, getting inspired to go out and make the next photograph.